Christine here with the Co-Living Coach Show. I know it has been a minute since I've been on with an episode. And some of you guys already know that I actually sold Kindred last the end of last year. And so we were in that whole transition. Um, Co-House, which is an incredible co-living operation out of Los Angeles, actually bought and acquired Kindred back in October of last year. So we were working on getting that all switched over. They are taking over all of our assets, including the Co-Living Coach Show. So they have plans to start it back up and take it fully over uh, sometime this year. So that's exciting. And I'm bringing on David, who is one of the four founders of Co-House. So we chat about that, the future of Kindred, but we mainly catch up with him on Co-House as a company. So I had interviewed him in August of 2019. So two and a half years ago, time goes really fast. This is pre-COVID days. And this is back when they had just three homes under operation. Now they have six under operation plus five more in development. And we go into a lot of detail about that. So they get us all caught up on their incredible growth. You know, like I say, during the interview, they're just such an incredible group of people that are building an amazing company. And I am so excited to see what they do next with Kindred. It's just in the right hands. Some of you guys know I had some health issues in 2019, 2020. Also took over two other spas because I have a heavy background in wellness and skincare spas, owning them. Took over two during COVID. So needless to say, I was a busy, busy girl. It just was time for somebody else to take over Kindred. It was a hard decision, but I know they, it's in great hands. So excited for the future and to sit back and watch that. Let's go ahead and launch into this episode. Um, we actually clipped out, we have a link for David's episode from two and a half years ago. So you can totally watch that. And it's, it, it was fun for me to even watch it this morning before we recorded. Um, but we're also clipping out the, his bio from then. Um, before this episode to so get caught up on who he is and what co-house is all about and then we'll launch right into the final episode that i'm doing i will miss everybody um i am launching a business youtube show uh teaching people and helping them how to sell their companies because um, i launched the magnolia firm which is a business brokerage firm i launched that in october of 2021 again it was the same month that kindred sold it was a crazy fun month for sure um so that's the fun new stuff I'm up to, and you can totally follow me along there. Still a co-liver myself. I live in the, still live at the entrepreneur house in San Diego, and I love every minute of it. So again, massive believer in co-living, and it was so much fun being, having such an active role in an industry that was constantly evolving and still is. So of course, you guys can still always reach out to me anytime and enjoy this episode with David with Co-House. Okay, like I said in the intro, it's been a while, everybody. I am so sorry, but I wanted to at least wrap up the show with one last episode, bringing on David Chun again. He's been on, it was two and a half years ago, and he is one of the four partners of Co-House, which is based out of Los Angeles. Like I said in the intro, they actually acquired Kindred in October 2021. Super excited about that. I've always been such a fan of what they're building and developing on the real estate side. And we have a link in the show notes. If you guys missed that first episode with David, um, please listen. I actually listened, re-listened to it this morning. Um, and knowing where you guys are at now, it's unbelievable. So we're going to catch everybody up on this episode. So welcome to the show today, David. Thanks. Thanks for uh, uh, having me back. <laughs> of course. What a cool background. I know it was fun because last one I noticed I was living in uh, Berlin when I filmed the last episode two and a half years ago with you. So now I'm, I'm back in, a, I'm also in Southern California in San Diego. So let's see. Okay. So first off, uh, you only had three houses. You guys had you know, started, and I know it's unique with your guys' concept is that you guys actually purchase the homes, you gut out the homes, you kind of rebuild them, you use your genius in architecture to create these amazing, to somehow magically fit 15 bedrooms and 15 bathrooms and in, inside of one house. And I've personally visited two of your houses since our last interview. I saw one that was fully lived in and functioning and it was absolutely gorgeous. And then I saw the other one where you guys had gutted it down. I think it was to the studs. Uh, so you guys, it was kind of starting a new house 
Um, so yeah, just catch us up. You guys were at three houses then on the last episode and where are you guys at now? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's been uh, a minute. Uh, actually we were just having a conversation. It seemed like uh, much longer than two and a half years ago. Um, but, uh, yeah, because we've just been through so much in the last, uh, couple of years, but, um, yeah, in terms of projects, uh, you know, we have, uh, six houses on, uh, in operation and we have five, uh, uh, you know, in various stages, uh, you know, construction and, um, in the planning stages. Um, yeah. And, and we have, uh, I forgot to mention. So yeah, we, we have one new project uh, where we're actually, uh, venturing outside of California in Atlanta, uh, so, uh, we're pretty excited about that. And what, what, uh, prompted that out of curiosity? Oh uh, yeah, it was just totally random. Uh, it was just, uh, an old, uh, sort of family sort of friend who was living out there, moved out there about 10 years ago. And he was really interested in what we were doing. And, um, you know, he, he, he sort of invited us out there to take a look and, uh, yeah, we just went, uh, all the partners went out there for, uh, you know, a little bit and, uh, studied the market and saw the potential and, um, yeah. And we went there for, I think we went there for four days and we were able to find the property and get it in contract and, uh, and then we came home. So, uh, so yeah, we're in the process of uh, doing our design work right now. And uh, yeah, we're very, very excited. It's a, it's a really exciting growing uh, market there. Um, yeah. Just a lot of uh, activity and development and businesses and uh, tech and film industry is really growing out there. So uh, it's really our sort of market, uh, demographics there. So we're really excited to, to see what's out there. And what are the specs on the house? Like how many square feet, how many bedrooms are you guys oh, in there? So yeah, uh, our projects. So, uh, you know, we first started, as you know, with, by, you know, acquiring these large oversized homes and, and renovating them and gutting them to, to, to create the co-living spaces. Uh, and then, so now our, our recent projects are all, all ground up mostly. Um, and they're also very kind of, smaller in scale, you know, because we, you know, we really believe that scale is what really makes co-living successful. And um, so basically some of our homes, you know, that have, you know, let's say 10 to 15 home, uh, 15 members, uh, they seem to be the most successful in terms of really creating a, a true community, a, a dyna dynamic community. And so we really, you know, we found success in this sort of recipe and we're basically replicating the scale, um, you know, in, in a ground up development by creating sort of two units at a time. So, uh, so this is just a two unit um, project. Uh, also, all of our ground ups in LA are two units, but each of them have, uh, you know, 10 to 15 bedrooms each uh, unit. So over there, it's about, uh, uh, about 6,000 square feet. Um, it's a little bit smaller uh, and about uh, eight bedrooms each. So 16 bedrooms total. Um, yeah. And what are the rents going to be over there? You know, surprisingly, uh, the rents are, are, so, I mean, basically the, um, the land prices are about half of what it's here. Um, I would say, you know, construction costs are probably about, I don't know, like 25, 30% less than here. Um, and, but the rent prices are maybe about maybe a 10% Delta there. So uh, just the numbers are pretty attractive, you know, uh, all around. So um, yeah, we just, we feel like there's a, uh, a lot to be had over there. So we'll see what happens. That's exciting. I know I was shocked when you told me last week that you guys are jumping out of, out of California, starting yeah. to develop elsewhere. I don't blame you. It's very expensive here and you guys oh. have done incredible. <laughs> yeah. It's ridiculous over here. Yeah, and then name the cities, um, the kind of the areas of Los Angeles that you guys have already, you know, put homes in. Oh yeah, um, so we, uh, you know, we started in Highland Park. Um, we have, uh, you know, West LA, um, uh, Culver City, um, uh, but mainly Koreatown. We feel like that's been a real um, sort of attractive location for a lot of people. Uh, it's very central to LA. It's easy access to the West and uh, Hollywood and um, you know South and, and downtown. So uh, it's and it's got you know great nightlife and and um, you know 
good food, et cetera. So, uh, yeah, it's been, that's been probably the most popular, uh, location for us. Uh, so yeah, we, we have several homes there now. And it's funny too, let's talk about Los Angeles, co-living in Los Angeles in general. So again, kind of like back when we first taught or last episode, we were like, wow, like LA, it's not really taking off. It's not, you know, there wasn't that much co-living happening. And then it literally, like maybe six months or a year after that, like exploded. There were so many developers (laughs) rushing over to Los Angeles to start developing co-living. So like on your side, like what have you seen? What are your thoughts about the LA co-living market? Yeah. uh, So yeah, there was that sort of, you know, soon after our interview, yeah, there was a a lot of activity and interest uh, in co-living and there was a lot of momentum. Uh, So but then the pandemic happened. <laughs> so, <laughs> da, da. so anything co seemed uh, risky to uh, a lot of people, uh, a lot of investors, etc. So, um, you know, I, I think that a lot of the co-living uh, operators suffered, uh, um, you know, and there was a lot of consolidation and, uh, you know, like Star City sold, sold their stuff and uh, I believe it, it was acquired by Common or, or the Common sort of investment group, and uh, and there are a lot of uh, smaller um, pod kind of co living models that uh, suffer tremendously. Um, I mean, you know, I, I, I do keep in touch with uh, uh, a lot of the co co living operators around here, and and the, the the pod operators really had a hard time because you know obviously there's. <laughs> no separation um and uh you know it was, it was you know obviously they, they packed in several people in a room so you know how do you keep that distance from each other which is obviously impossible um so uh i think they 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 got hit pretty hard um i mean for us you know when when the pandemic started it, it was you know everyone was a little concerned obviously but um you know for us uh, we did quite well uh, in, during this pandemic. And um, we believe that it's largely due to the way our sort of, the way we sort of interpret co-living as these sort of individual suites that really maintain a level high level of privacy. Um, obviously it's co-living, so there's shared space, um, but uh, you do have the ability to kind of create buffers uh, much more easily than these pod uh, co-living operators. So, um, yeah, so uh, we actually did quite well uh, during this time. Um, so, and, the, you know, there were probably out of all the members, there was probably one person that moved out, um, but everyone else stayed and really appreciated the fact that they uh don't have to be so isolated, you know, in these, you know, pandemic times and, you know, how, how that was. I mean, it was, uh, I think it was really hard psychologically on, on a lot of people and, and to be alone in that environment, I think it's tough. And uh, at least so, you know, they really had sort of people around, I mean, obviously they can, you know, have their privacy in their rooms and, but, uh, you know, when the opportunity, you know, if they chose to, they, they could be a part of this community and, and sort of talk to people and, you know, talk about, you know, what their feelings are and whatever it is. I mean, the connection was there for it to be, you know, a, a sort of a nurturing community. So I think really the, the members really appreciated that. And, um, yeah. And, and, and that's why we were able to really sort of, you know, push through it and, uh, and continue to grow. And we've, we've grown steadily. Um, you know, we haven't, you know, exploded, but, uh, you know, I think the, the the hard part i think was that you know the pandemic kind of scared off a lot of investors you know because they you know they just you know the idea of sharing in in, in the age of the pandemic was uh was too risky for a lot of investors i think especially you know especially real estate people who are so risk averse and um you know not much has changed in that industry until until finally co-living happened so um yeah so I think that uh, you know, you know, we'll, we'll continue to grow, and we've grown steadily. And um, I think we're, you know, uh, it, you know, we've had some frustrations with some of our investors, um, but what we know 
um, is that as operators uh, and, you know, sort of knowing and, and, you know, befriending all of a lot of our members and who, you know, who give us a lot of feedback and, and, you know, to see how happy they are uh, with, you know, to have this sort of alternative, you know, uh, option to, uh, for housing is, um, you know, it's, it's really important to them um, and they really appreciate it. And, and so, so we, you know, the proof is in the pudding as, as people say, uh, you know, it's a, we're just so confident uh, about our, our co-living model. Um, you know, we just need to wait for the, the pandemic to settle down and, and um, you know, real estate people to, to actually see what, what we see. Um, so uh, yeah. So we're, we're still uh, really sort of confident about what we're doing and, and we're forging ahead. I love that. And I think with the pod living, the other thing that hurt them the most, it wasn't necessarily, you know, yes, they were all in very close quarters, obviously was a problem. But I think separate from that was the price point, the demographic is different. So it was a lot of, you know, waiters and waitresses and actors. And, and so they all lost their jobs. And that caused issues of them not being able to pay the rent, not necessarily, oh, we're in close quarters, that's one issue. But yeah, so I think you're right, you know, after the fact, that's kind of what ended up happening, because I was speaking with a lot of them too. Um, And you were, you guys were forward thinking before even realizing it, because I remember (laughs) touring your homes pre pandemic and the rooms, I remember commenting, like, I just couldn't believe you fit. So a, you fit so many rooms under one roof B they were such a great like space. Like there was a lot of space and they all had in suite bathrooms. And I'm like, that's so great. And you go, and you guys were like, yeah, now this like version two model, you know, we have like built in desks so they can work from the room if they want to work from their room. And again, pre pandemic. So luckily you guys were, uh, <laughs> you're always forging ahead and uh, innovating because I think that was a game changer when everybody had to work from home. Right. Yeah. 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 That was, uh, yeah. Yeah. We, I, we're, we're fortunate. Yeah. So we, we were able to figure that out early. <laughs> That's amazing. No, amazing size bedrooms, gorgeous bathrooms, the kitchen. I just remember again, walking in and, you know, that kitchen being that focus point, you know, which you said in the last episode, you know, that people do, you build community. All the conversations always happen in the kitchen. I like even here at my, our co-living home, you know, everybody always kind of congregates in the kitchen around the food or the drinks. Um, so that's cool that you've made that, you know, that, that focus point, you guys, beautiful, huge kitchens. And yeah, you guys have definitely built correctly the investors well gosh that's so do you guys your investors are they mostly like are they uh is it private money family offices real estate like uh, who are you guys pulling in uh yeah they're mainly kind of real estate you know there are all, there's a lot of like uh you know high net worth family uh real estate groups here um that's that's who we've been mainly dealing with um and just yeah just you know it's either sort of a group a family group uh, or, you know, these, you know, high net worth individuals who are uh, interested in in what we're doing. And um, yeah, so it's, it's mainly, and, and, you know, they have to have some, you know, uh, interest in uh, uh, obviously there's, there's a lot of upside with co-living, but it mainly is that they're just really interested in what we're doing, you know, um, as sort of part of the sort of the housing sort of solution um, that we're able to create and build uh, something very unique um, and uh, and something that works and and you know they're interested in, in building something um, yeah interesting and, and exciting and um, so yeah there's, there's a lot of that uh, plays in the um, in the calculus. That makes sense. No, and then the um, have your demographics shifted at all since we last spoke? So I know before you were saying it's like early twenties to late forties. Is that yeah. still kind of the range? What percentage are yeah. male versus female? Uh, male versus female, it's probably 50-50. Um, and uh, the demographics, uh, yeah, I mean it's still largely twenties and thirties uh, mainly. I mean we do have a couple of people in their forties. Um, but yeah, it's it's largely uh, yeah that sort of group, which is uh, which is really good because you know I mean the, the Gen Z and millennials are their their sort of population is 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 
I think soon to, or it, it may even be now, it, it's sur- uh, surpassing the um, population of the, the baby boomers now. So um, I, I think that that market is, is tremendous. And um, yeah, I mean, a lot, of, a lot of those kids that come out of college, you know, you either uh, live with your parents <laughs> or, you know, uh, obviously you're going to have a roommate situation or, or uh, uh, something that's purpose built like co-living. And I know rents have gone up tremendously across the U.S. the last couple of years. You guys were kind of at the twelve fifty, thirteen fifty price point for Los yeah. Angeles. Are you yeah. guys, did you guys increase because you guys are running uh, full? And- yeah. So, I mean, the, the newer homes, uh, I think it's sort of at, I think it's maybe 1350 to 1450. Mm-hmm. Some of the larger rooms are like 1550, I believe. Um, but, uh, you know, I mean, we, we need to keep it uh, reasonable, you know? Uh, so, um, yeah, I mean, we, we want this to be um, like, and we see some of the operators who just like, you know, have went really like, uh, you know, really put the bells and whistles on some of their, uh, their newer builds and, um, you know, it, it kind of forces them to have to raise their prices, you know, <laughs> and, and, and when it gets to a certain level, it's just like, okay, now it's becoming even more expensive than a, a standard studio. Um, you know, it's like, then what's the point of co-living, man? <laughs> you know, it's like, it's gotta be, it's gotta make, I mean, one of the things, obviously community is a big factor, but you know, it's, I, we feel like it, the, the point of it is that we got to make it more, you know, affordable, reasonable, um, obviously. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we just make sure that, uh, that price point is, um, is where it should be. Yeah. And you guys include, you guys include all the utilities. Do you guys do events? Yeah. So, uh, uh, yeah, so we, we have utilities, uh, uh, you know, obviously we have cleaning services and stuff, but, um, uh, yeah, we, we do events, uh, and largely ha- they happen kind of, uh, we kind of leave it to the, the, the community facilitators in each home. Um, you know, we celebrate everyone's birthdays, uh, you know, obviously the holidays, uh, you know, Super Bowl barbecues, uh, um, and, you know, sometimes, you know, people just want to get together, have a movie night. And, uh, you know, so we, we always sort of, you know, kind of facilitate that as well, you know? So, um, you know, we really want people to do that. So, you know, obviously we, we, we're covering all of that stuff. So we really encourage people to do it because, um, you know, I mean, to, to have these events, it allows people to have more opportunities to connect uh, which really translates uh, in terms, you know, for our, our business, it's uh, longer stays really, you know, once uh, the people who are more active in, in these, um, you know, events uh, tend to stay longer. So um, yeah, that's what we want. <laughs> well, and you guys, do, are you still offering six to 12 month terms? We are, we are. And, and um, like, like, I mean, like, like I said, it's still, a, a, you know, like, I mean, co-living now, everyone knows what co-living or they've heard of co-living, right? It's before it was like, Oh, what's, what's co-living. So we don't have to explain that anymore, but uh, they, they understand the concept, but then a lot of people uh, still have a lot of kind of reservations about, okay, well, are, am I really going to be living with 10, 15 people? Like I understand the concept and stuff, but you know, what is it really like living with all those people? I mean, and so, I think uh, a lot of people you know, still need to sort of have this experience and, and the sort of, and, and sort of be educated and on what co-living is like. Um, so, I mean, most people now we've, uh, I, what I sort of observed is that they tend to uh, start with a six months just to kind of get their foot wet and see what it's like. And then, you know, and then they get comfortable and they see what it's like and, you know, and, and then they stay, you know, so um that's but most people it seems that they're signing up for six months uh these days yeah because you guys the idea the conception of this idea started what 2015 16 and like when was first what year was first occupancy uh first occupancy for us yes for your first house oh uh man when was okay so we did our interview in 2000 19? Uh, August, yeah, 2019. 2019, yeah. So I think we had our first occupant probably late 2018 or early oh, 2019 yeah. or something like that. Yeah. 
Oh yeah. my gosh. That's, and then how many, so with the six houses in operations, how many rooms, how many uh, rooms are, is that total between the six houses you have running uh, right now? Uh, <laughs> it's probably around 50. Oh, wow. And then yeah. are you guys, what's the occupancy rate you guys are running right now? Oh, uh, total. Much, uh, I mean, we have a, we launched a new house a few months ago and that has probably a couple of rooms left. Uh, but we're pretty much full. I know you guys are always full and it, yeah. it's funny. I, uh, and David already knows this. I was, when I moved back, I had to rush back from Europe and move back to California. I was debating if I go back to LA and I love West LA or do I go back to San Diego, which I'd lived at for 17 years. All my friends were there. So yeah, split second decision came to San Diego said LA, but I told David, I was like, oh, if I would have, I would have totally lived at one of your houses without, yeah. a, without a doubt. <laughs> so uh, yeah. Or if I ever moved back to LA, how about that? Never say never. Yeah, <laughs> LA is a great city. Yeah. Well, it's always uh, open for you, Christine. Nice. Nice. I know. And I'm still in my original, everybody. I'm still at the original entrepreneur house. <laughs> so yeah. I think I added it up. I was here for two and a half years. Um, from like around 2015 to 2017. And then now I just hit the two and a half year mark since I've been back from Europe. So I've been to the same exact co-living house for five years total. So, uh, oh, yeah. so you're still there now. I am. Oh, wow. Okay. I didn't know that. Wow. Yeah. I mean, it's hard to leave, right? <laughs> hey, and, and, and point your investors to our, to my show. Cause I, I, we, and during COVID I had brought each of the housemates on separately that, that lived here at the time, you know, some still live here. Some, some have moved on, but, um, and they really went into deep detail on how, how grateful they were living here during COVID. Same with me. Like I can't, like, I loved when you talked about that earlier in this interview, you went into detail about how grateful everybody was to be living within community and having people to talk to and, and still being able to socialize in some capacity versus if they were in that studio by themselves, like during that time, I can't even, I mean, right. people were losing their mind. Like my friends that did live alone, it, it was, it was hard for them. So uh, yeah, no, we yeah. had the time of our lives and yeah, so we just got along so great. Um, I made the best of it, but I'm a big advocate for co-living. Like I always will be, obviously I'm, I'm still living it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you're, you're, you're our thought leader. I mean, you were one of the first people out there um, spreading the word. So um, yeah, it was a, uh, it was a big inspiration for me. Um, you know, one thing that's also interesting uh, is that, you know, one of our, our new homes right now um, it's, you know, obviously this is uh, the sort of, you know, this designed and built for communities to thrive. And um, so one of our residents um, who's part of this uh, NFT artist community, and I, I don't know too much about NFTs, but, uh, you know, uh, there's a, a real sort of movement and, and a, um, sort of like a culture there. Um, and so he's basically pooling um, his sort of, you know, you know, network to basically uh we're in negotiations right now but he wants to basically take over an entire house to be able to build his to sort of accommodate his entire community of artists uh for a house so uh, it was it was really inspiring for me to see that you know that he saw what we're building uh, was really you know built and conducive for uh sort of community living and you know he just he was just he was just so excited about it and he, he wanted to um you know actually sort of build his community in 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 our, our new home so um yeah it was it was really exciting to see that he saw that and the potential in that and um so yeah he's he's uh currently he's sort of putting his uh, group together to see if this would work so uh, it's really interesting. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously this is a, a community of artists, uh, I'm sure. And there was another group, uh, who was, uh, there was a, a, a bunch of uh, musicians who wanted to sort of consider this too. So, um, yeah, it's, I think it's really cool that the, that this is actually can apply um, to, uh, you know, a, a pre-made community to, 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 to inhabit. 
That is super cool. Yeah. And just other future partnerships of people approaching you guys where you've already like you're doing, yeah, that kind of outer shell of the community and then they're bringing their own community within that shell. Yeah. Oh, that is super cool. Okay. And okay. speaking of NFTs, I had a, a good friend of mine a few months back, his, his event space fell through at the last minute. So he's like, you know, Hey, can we host an NFT event, you know, at your home? And it, it was super last minute. And oh. I, I thought maybe it was gonna be like 15 people. And I'm like, yeah, sure. And they're like, yeah, we just need a screen to do a PowerPoint. I'm like, yeah, no joke. We crammed like 50 people in our living room. <laughs> really? Because <laughs> they needed to do a PowerPoint. And again, our home, we host very, you know, we have a large home. We host big parties. But yeah, wow. if you're sitting all in a living room with a screen doing a PowerPoint, I was like, oh, yeah, 50 <laughs> people. Is, it was, I, I even learned tons myself. It was fun. But wow. again, having that space and having a community of entrepreneurs and, you know, being able to, to host events. Uh, is really cool, especially now, hopefully, knock on wood, you know, we're, <laughs> we've got, we turned our events back on. We're actually hosting our, our monthly wine night tonight, even. Mm. Um, so yeah, hopefully everything with the, the C word has calmed down and we can have our big, big events again, have people over. Um, I do want, let me see if I have, uh, oh, oh, I wanted to touch on, you'd mentioned a community facilitator. Is that what they're called at each home? Like a community yeah. leader? Can yeah. you talk about that role and are you discounting yeah. their rent or? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, we do uh, uh, discount their rent for the work. Um, uh, so we're actually in the process of kind of standardize, standardizing uh, sort of the, the roles more in detail, you know, because uh yeah, obviously, with with the number of homes we have and and, and the growth that we're doing, you know, we, we we need to sort of have a standardized playbook on on what we expect from uh, uh, the facilitators. So um, yeah, we're we're just in the process of that. Um, you know, we don't see them. I mean, you know, their their role isn't to be a police and, and make sure everyone follows rules. I mean, that's that's not what we want. Obviously, we want them to be more a part of the community. And uh, obviously, they're they're sort of they are uh, you know we obviously communicate them communicate with them um, on a regular basis. We have like meetings where all the uh, the house uh, facilitators uh, we meet once in a while to just sort of share notes and see what works and doesn't work. Um, but um, yeah, so I mean they're there to I mean obviously you know facilitate you know things uh, material uh, you know toiletries or whatever the house needs, but. Um, sometimes they're there to um, sometimes mediate between, you know, when there's any issues. Um, uh, and then, uh, and of course, they, they sort of have a pulse on the house and, and the community members and, and uh, you know, what they're interested in and, and uh, um, yeah, and, and what events are, are popular and not popular. So, um, yeah, they're, they're sort of the organizers. And then within kind of on a corporate level or within your, like, who do they then report to? Um, yeah. So the, the founders are still very involved with everything. Um, <laughs> and I mean, we do have uh, a, a, a few employees um, and, you know, we do have kind of a, a, a sort of a point person who sort of manages all the, the facilitators. Um, but um when we do have these meetings, uh, you know, you know uh, at least at least one founder, at, at least maybe two or three, uh, we're, we're all, we all participate because uh, we really want to understand, uh, you know, obviously the the house and, and where where things are at and what's working because it, it really ultimately informs us for our future developments and and how we need to make adjustments if need be and. Um, I feel like that's really been uh, really helpful for me as a designer uh, because, uh, you know, you can really see, um, you know, obviously this, this has been a big experiment. I mean, there's nothing, there's, there, there aren't any, um, sort of, there aren't many precedents for, for co-living, obviously. So um, it's really exciting to uh, be on the sort of the cutting edge of things and to be sort of be heavily involved in operations. You know, it really helps. Uh, you know, obviously inform what what has worked and what hasn't worked and what things need to be improved upon. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's really, really been helpful and our product out there. And you'll see you'll see as, as we our, our newer developments, uh, the improvements we've made. Um, and uh, yeah, it's really exciting to see. Are you guys ever going to come down to San Diego and build? <laughs> 
You know, we've talked about that a lot, actually. Uh, we've talked about that a lot. So, yeah, we, we definitely want to. We want to see your house. Um, How wanna, long was it? Yeah, you got to give us a, you know, when, next time you have an event, uh, yeah, let us know. We'd love oh, to. Oh, good. Come. No, for sure. You guys should totally come down and we'll give a whole tour. And again, this was, yeah, yeah we made the best. It's a big house, but we didn't, yeah. you know, gut it out and make <laughs> Make, make a cool design like yours is but no happy to, to tour actually anybody listening to the show you guys are always welcome if you're in san diego we love giving tours we do it all the time um everybody's always fascinated by our living model and and how we we live together um so i definitely wanted to touch on yeah so i know obviously you guys have been so busy on the dev the real estate development side right so you got six houses in operation already you got five in development all in different stages i didn't even know you guys are building ground up now <laughs> yeah 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 so, so that that's been really exciting for us because uh you know all these ideas we talked about like you know hearing the show again uh, just recently before this interview and uh you know just kind of hearing what i was talking about and uh uh it's almost like uh seeing your high school yearbook or something you know it's just like we feel like if there's been so much development since then um so um yeah th these newer homes I, I think that uh our ground up homes we had a lot more control um you know the rooms of uh you know we've basically created uh, these individual rooms. We wanted to add another layer to, to these spaces. So we have a high ceiling so where we can create like sleeping lofts and a sitting area separately so that, you know, there's sort of more, uh, you know, options and, uh, and layers to the space, the private spaces. Um, the common areas, um, like we talked about uh, in the first show, it's like, uh, you know, it's it's sort of about this passageway and creating opportunities for sort of these, you know, serendipitous encounters. And um, so these passageways that is sort of a network of uh, all, where it, they connect not only the rooms, but obviously all the common spaces, but, you know, these these, these passageways are, are more than just a hallway, let's say, you know, it, it's, it's sort of, uh, you know, we have enough space where there are all these reliefs. Uh, we have like, uh, you know, obviously little reading rooms and TV rooms and obviously the main main uh, kitchen uh, cafes. But, you know, we also created like little uh, Zoom rooms so where the people who work at home, they can you know, sh shut their door and they don't have to be in their room all the time. They have we have these dedicated Zoom rooms. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think it's uh, we, we broke ground on our first uh, development a couple of months ago, um, uh, which is you know here in, in West Adams. And um and uh, yeah, we're just so excited because we feel like once this is uh, once we can show a ground up development, uh, we can really sort of uh, show people what what co living can can be. <laughs> so uh, really excited about it. When does that one open? Uh, yeah, so we started uh, in January, and I hope by the end of this year. <laughs> we can finish and uh really start marketing it um but yeah we'll, we have to have you over obviously um but just uh fantastic common areas um you know i, I feel like maybe we we put too much in in the common area but you know I, you know i think it's it can only benefit the you know people living in it and uh we have a beautiful roof deck uh it's like the tallest building in this neighborhood so it's the, like the views are going to be great um yeah. I love that. Yeah. So that's, so, so you guys acquired Kindred October last year, 2021. Gosh, time's flying and you know, everybody, but I know you guys haven't started development. So people were asking me like, Oh, what are they going to do next? I'm like, they are so busy on the real estate side. Yeah. So I yeah. know that, you know, we had chatted me and you and Lyndon, your business partner last week kind of got caught up finally, because we've all been so busy. Um, so you guys are looking at kind of starting to work on the technology piece of, you know your guys's company more towards the end like the, probably fall time right of this year is when you right. guys are diving in because yeah. that's a whole nother well coming from <laughs> i know i personally know how much work tech is yeah i mean we we uh i mean lyndon my business partner is more versed than i am but um you know we did you know the the so we acquired kindred uh and and you know just sort of reviewing all the content that you created um you know over the years that you 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 were you know in it 
uh, it's there's so much there, Christine. There's just so much thought, and uh, really, really, just so much content. I really appreciate uh, everything that you you've done. Um, so uh, we're, we're not. So we're just starting to sort of understand the, uh, what's there and and sort of trying to figure out what what the best direction is right now. So, uh, but in terms of the marketplace, yeah, we, we're we're definitely forging ahead. Um, you know, one of one of the main things we we had talked about is is sort of trying to uh, focus on, on on the people, the member uh, of the community, because you know that's one of the biggest uh, things that uh, people ask about is like, who am I going to uh, be living with? I mean, the, these these uh, these co-living homes are about this larger community, so um, you know to sort of have uh, uh, you know maybe the the members featured uh, you know. Uh, Sort of individually, so that uh, it can somehow tie in with the uh, the marketplace and the listing somehow. So um, that's sort of the the initial thought. That we, yeah, we we do have a long way to to develop. I know, but I'm so excited. You guys are gonna be so great at it. I'm just so like it was so important to me to find that right person that could take it over and take it to the next level and acquire the company. And I couldn't be more happy, you know, amongst everybody we had talks with. I was like, oh my gosh, but I already know these guys and I love what they're doing. And um, and before we hit start on this interview, you know, David was telling me, we were talking about this community feature and I was like, oh my gosh, that was a component we already built out because that was like one of my original, original visions was the importance of like, and I even have, you know, to this day, my profile's on there under the entrepreneur house. So you could click my name. You could learn about me. You could see the houses I was an alumni of because I was in other co-living homes, one in LA, another one in San Diego. And so, yeah, we didn't even ever talk. About, David's like, wait, what? You already built that out? Yeah. Yeah, so, so there's so much tech, you know, kind of behind the scenes that can exactly right, help build community. Because if yeah. I were to move to another co-living home, I would want to know, hey, who's living there? You yeah. know, a lot of the alumni, so a lot of our alumni here at the Entrepreneur House, and one day I should count up how many people have lived here in the eight years the house has been around, but um, a lot of them went and co-lived together in LA. A few of them recently went together. A couple of them live in a house in Austin, Texas now. So everybody kind of follows each other around. So that would be cool to kind of see, oh, let me click on that house. Oh my gosh, I already know that person. I co-lived with them right. four years ago. Right, 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 right. I mean, so that's part of, I mean, this sort of got us thinking. So with our own website, you know, when we sort of redid our website, you know, one of the big sort of ads were, uh, was to include uh, sort of, you know, people of co-house, right? So like we we featured, you know, with, you know, pictures of uh, our, our current members, former members, and they, you know, they, you know, they talk about exactly why they chose, I mean, not necessarily just a, just a testimonial, but just kind of like, I wanted people to understand, you know, why people chose to live here because, you know, a lot of people are curious. And, and so, um, yeah, it's just sort of, featured uh uh the people of of co-house and uh i think that's really helped um you know interested people kind of you know help them understand what this is uh about which is which is about the people it is a perfect point to to end with david thank you so i know how busy you are i know i was reaching out like we gotta bring you on okay. on our final episode i know that you guys are taking over the show also so in the future you guys will will do some fun stuff with the co-living coach shows so they yeah. um took over that too and and yeah i can't wait well no matter what we have to do another interview in two years just to keep well, seeing the yearbook right <laughs> well well when, when once we get started, we're going to have you as our guest. So oh, we'll, yay. we'll kind of switch uh, seats here and uh, we'll have to do it uh, again for sure. Awesome. Okay. Thanks again, David. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Okay. You too. Thank you. Thank you so much for checking out today's episode. 